Chestnut Ridge Middle School, good afternoon. Today, Newsletter Club is here on our second interview. Uh, we're doing a small group interview now, and we just did a solo. Uh, our students are gonna point, uh, raise their hand when I say their name. We have Matthew Henriquez, Caden Gilmore, and we are interviewing Ariel Borjo. Ariel is an award, Grammy Award winning recording engineer. Um, you can check him out at arielborjo.com, A-R-I-E-L-B-O-R-U-J-O-W.com. And for right now, um, you guys have an exclusive, so I guess Newsletter Club, we can start asking away. How long have you been mixing? Mixing specifically has been professionally about 10 years. Where do you live? Right now, I live in Suffern. Before that, uh, I was living in New York City for over 20 years. How long, how long did it take you to make? That's a good question. One song? Yeah. Okay. So it can depend. Generally, one song takes me an entire day to do. And then what I do is I usually, at the end of the day, rather than commit and say I'm finished, I'll stay away from it, I'll go to sleep, I'll wake up in the morning, and I'll listen to it with fresh ears, because what happens is when you spend too much time on a song, you end up overthinking it, and you're not hearing it from a, it's always important to listen to it from a fan perspective, not from a working perspective. So when I wake up the next morning, I listen to it with fresh ears, and I make decisions better. What was the biggest artist you worked with? That's a, that's a long, I don't know. Um, I've worked with a lot of artists. Go um, back, old school. I mean, I don't know. Um, I worked at, I don't know, I've worked with everyone from Madonna to Biggie to Mac Miller to T.I. to Nicki Minaj. I don't know. I don't know who's, who's bigger than who, you know? Um, I don't know. Just different artists, I guess. How did, how did you start it? I started mixing through just being interested from eight years old. Um, would you look up to somebody? I didn't. Uh, it kind of just fell in my lap. Uh, you know, uh, I was, I didn't want to sing in choir class in eighth grade, uh, eighth grade, eight years old. So the teacher suggested I run the music and I discovered what a graphic equalizer is. And uh, I started messing around with different frequencies and, you know, boosting up low end. There's more bass and high end. There's more treble. And, um, and then I discovered uh, hip hop and rock music. And I just enjoyed how one, one genre had more bass. I gravitated towards bass music. And uh, another one had very guitar grip and high end. And I just loved the, the, the two different genres. Um, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, I know that I wanted to work in a recording studio, and that's where um, I think at the time I just wanted to work in a studio, so it didn't matter what I did. But as I started learning about the process of making records and albums, I gave I cared more about the mixing aspect of it. I like the fact that it's more creative than recording. I do enjoy recording. I think I've recorded once in the last five years and everything else has been mixing and i think with mixing i enjoy it more because i consider myself an artist and i'm very uh there's 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 definitely an artist side to mixing you can you can really uh, you can put your feeling into it so a lot of it is putting your feeling so understanding if you have to put you know effects on the vocals drum has to be louder, if the snare drum has to be loud in a hip hop record so it feels and gives you some sort of energy. So you're putting your your feeling and energy into a record and I like that. How many artists did you work with so far in this year? This year? I don't know, I would say I would say fifty to one hundred. Maybe. Maybe more, I, I don't know. It's hard to count sometimes. Why did you start mixing? Like I said, it was just a passion. I just, I just 
enjoyed being, I just enjoyed that time of putting my feeling into a song. So I got to bring my ears into, into the artist's vision and help them create that vision and finish the vision that they set out to create. Where did you start? My first job, my first internship was at a studio called Green Street Studios, which was in Soho in Manhattan. Um, I worked there for nine months. Then I got a job at a studio in Times Square that no longer exists. Um, my first paid job, they weren't looking for anyone to work in the studio, they were looking for a secretary, so I offered up my services, but I had other motives, was to learn the studio. So I learned the studio, they gave me the job as the secretary. I got the, um, I made friends with the engineer, and then he taught me the room, and when he left, I learned, I took over his job. And then after that, I wanted to learn hip hop. And at the time, the best person in the business was Sean Puffy Combs. And then I got a job at his studio and that kind of helped take my career to where I am today. I think. If you weren't mixing, what would you want to be or what job? Audio, doesn't matter. Be mixing television, I could be mixing movies, audio. Now there's podcasts, you can do that. There's so many jobs in audio, I don't know. For me, as long as I'm just controlling sound, I like, but mixing is such a passion. It's the best. So a lot of students in Chestnut, since I've been here, I've seen some students are able to try new things. I, well, let's, let me rephrase that. Everyone is able to try new things. Some students are very reluctant. In other words, they don't always want to try new stuff. And other students jump at every opportunity they can get. Um, so I'm going to say I knew Ariel when he was really young. As a matter of fact, I was in middle, he and I were in middle school together here in Rockland County. Um, Ariel was always a person that liked to try new things and personally I think that because he was always somebody who liked to try new things I think that that's what, one of the primary reasons um, that he is in the position that he's in today and that he's had the opportunity to work with so many different artists um, is largely because he has a good attitude. Um, but neither one of you was in newsletter club in elementary school and I know that because they don't have newsletter clubs there. So both of you guys tried new things. Um, there's a lot of people in the background here that have tried new things. Um, and I, I couldn't commend you more for that because ultimately having an open mind and being willing to go out there and get out of your comfort, comfort zone is, uh, is what produces successful uh, professionals such as Ariel. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you have to take risks. Exposed to something, you know, you might enjoy this so much that you might want to be a reporter one day. You never know. Or work for a music publication and travel around the world and interview different artists. So there's, so there's a, and you won't know unless you try things. You have to try things. That's what I did. You might want to try to be a teacher one day. Or you might want to try, like Ariel said, to be a recording engine, a recording artist. But did, did you guys have any other questions? Ariel, did you have anything that you want to say? I don't think so. I think they covered it all. Well, on behalf of everyone here at Newsletter Club, I want to say thank you for taking the time to, uh, out, of your, out of your day to come and speak with us. And um, Kaden and Matthew did a phenomenal job. They wrote those literally. They had no time to prepare, prepare those questions because I kind of brought you in here at the last minute. And... Um, this was like literally an interview on the fly. So I, I think everyone did phenomenally. And um, let's get some pounds in here. All right. I think that should be a wrap. Thank you, guys. Cool.